What's up, Kyle Gang? Welcome back to some statics. So, what do we got here? Well, we got these, uh, this vector problem here. So, we're trying to find the resultant force. And I guess it's the equation that results in force is equal to the force of vector 1 and vector 3 added to each other. So, we're just looking at vector 1 and vector 3 here. We can kind of ignore vector 2 for this problem. Check out my video on 9 or 2 9 for this one. So, we're going to find the magnitude and its direction located okay, counterclockwise from the positive x axis of so this way. So let's go ahead and solve for that, right? So we're doing vector addition, so we want to break these vectors down into their components first. That's always like the first step you want to do when you're adding vectors, is you can't just add 400 to 250 because they're pulling opposite directions. But what we can do is we're going to break it down to the x and y. So let's do that. So I'm going to start by drawing our force one. So here's force one, right? Its hypotenuse is 400 newtons, but it also has these two other vectors on it. So we can think about it as going this way. So it's gonna have a vector that goes like this and a vector that goes like this. So this can be force one X and this can become force one Y. And we know that this is 30 degrees in here. So what we need to find, right, is what is force one X and force one Y. So we can break this vector down into its components, right? So force one is equal to force one X I plus force one Y J. So this i component means that this is the x component, and this y means that it's the uh, y component, or this j means that it's the y component. So how can we find this, right? Well, we need to do trigonometry. So I break this down a little bit more clear in the last video, but check this out. Uh, I'll make it a little simpler in this one. So force one x, right? This is laid down flat, right? This is adjacent to that angle. So if we want to lay this 400 down to the adjacent angle, we're going to do 400 newtons. I almost wrote 400 with clicking an F. But so we're going to do 400. And then we're going to attach a cosine of 30. And we did the cosine because it's adjacent to the angle here. Then for force from y, we see that this is in negative direction. So we did a positive on this x because it's going in the positive x direction. But we need to subtract this one because it's going into y. So again, we're going to do 400. And because it's the opposite, remember sine is opposite hypotenuse. So we need to do opposite sine here, sine 30j. Uh, so there we go, this is our equation for our vector, force one. And so you could write this out, force one. I guess I'm gonna write it up here instead. So this gives you 346i minus 200j. So this is our force one vector. So let's do it for force three, right? Because we need our force three vector two if we're gonna add them together. And let's sit down for that. All right, so here's what we got, right? And, and we can write it like this. So here's, right, it's hypotenuse is 250 newtons. And we you know that is 30 degree angle here. So this is force three Y, and this is force three X. All right, so we need to find these things, right? So let's do it. So force two is similar, right? It's gonna be force two, or three now, that's what we're doing, is equal to force three X, for the I component, plus force three Y, and the J component. So try this out for yourself, but I'm gonna go ahead and solve it here. So the X component, right, we're solving for this one, this time, it's um, opposite, right? It's not adjacent to the angle, it's opposite. So we need to attach a sine to the x component. So this is gonna be 250 sine of 30 i. So not always cosines the i. It can switch between sine and cosine, depending which angle you have. And then so here, also remember, this is going in the negative direction. Like if you think about this, this vector is pointing in the negative x direction, but the positive y direction, because it's in quadrant two. So we need to attach our negative to that x direction there. This y direction though is positive, so we're gonna add it 250. And because it's adjacent to the angle, we're gonna do cosine of 30j. All right, then we can solve for this. So this is gonna give you force three is equal to negative 125i plus 217j. And of course, these are both the newtons. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this because we've done it all now. So now we get into the vector addition part. So this is where we're gonna actually add the vectors together and get our answer. So let's go ahead and go for that. So like we have this equation here, 
force results at and vector is equal to force one plus force three. So this time, instead of just writing the vectors, we're gonna write the components that we found. So it's gonna be 346i minus 200j, but then force three is negative 125i plus 217j. And so let's go ahead and put this in here. So we're gonna solve for this as a vector. So 346 minus 125, right? We keep the i's together. It comes out to 221i. And then the y component, negative 200 plus 217, just comes out to positive 17j. And this is in Newton's. So that's our vector. Now we want to find um, the magnitude of it. So we can think about this vector, of course, all vectors, you can think about them as triangles. So here's our axes, right? This is our x-axis and our y-axis. This is just what we're seeing there. We see that our x is 221 and our y is 17. So it's gonna look like this, it's our triangle. Right, where this is 221 on the x and this is 17 on the y. And so we wanna find the magnitude of this triangle and we know it's a right triangle. So we can use a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, Pythagoras theorem, right? If r squared is equal to 221 squared plus 17 squared, but then you can just get that force result in, take the square root, 221 squared plus 17 squared. Solve for it, and you can get that it is 222 newtons. And that's your answer. So now we need to find the orientation counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So if we're looking here, this is our positive x-axis, and we want to go counterclockwise from it. So that's just going to be this angle here, which is, I already denoted there as theta. So how do we find that? Well, we can use our trig identities, right? We know sine, cosine, theta, or sine, cosine, tangent, is what I meant to say. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use tangent because that's usually the easiest one. So tangent is usually opposite over adjacent. So if our theta is here, our opposite is 17, and our adjacent is 221. So if we wanna find theta, we're gonna take inverse tangent of both sides. Just gonna leave us with theta is equal to inverse tangent of 17 over 221. Solve for theta, and you get 4.26 degrees. And there you go, there are your two answers. So that's how you solve this kind of problem. Uh, if you need more help with this, check out my playlist. I have a whole playlist on hundreds of statics problems from this book, uh, so if this is helpful to you, uh, I might be able to help you out. Uh, subscribe to my channel, that helps a lot, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.